It is important to have your group members contact information because when you do your midterm report, remember that you have to fill in a peer review sheet. This is where you record how much each group member contributed to your report. So you will need to tell me your group number and each of your group members at least student number. Uh, and Chinese name if you know it. And then here you will tell me how much that group member contributed. From one to five points. If this group member, you have never seen them in your life. They have never appeared in any kind of discussion. You don't know, you didn't know this person is part of your group until the day of the report, and they didn't do anything. You can give them a zero. But every other member, if they show up, if you know who they are, you should at least give them one. Okay? And then you can tell me any other information if you want to. Um, so after each group's presentation, please, uh, every person will write one of these and then submit it here. Um, I hope you can submit this the same day as your presentation. Um, but if later, that's also fine. The only group that has to submit on the day is group seven, and they will be presenting on November 15. Group seven has to submit by the day because I have to send out these scores the next day before 1 p.m. So I need time to figure out the score. OK. Uh, so group seven has to submit the day of their presentation. The first presentation will begin on week, I think, four, right? Actually, let's let's check. Yes, week four, presentation one. So group one and then week five is group two, one per week. Um, so just a reminder, the presentation is to read a chapter or your chapter. Sorry, not this one. Read your chapter from this thing. Uh, tell the rest of the class what is in this chapter. What does it say? And then tell us whether you think it makes sense. How much sense does it make? Where does it make sense? Where does it not make sense? Any length of time is OK. Uh, and you only have to send one person if you don't want to send everybody to the stage. You don't have to send everybody. But every person has to contribute in some way. OK. Cool. Now, uh, one more thing I want to remind you before we begin this week. Last time I talked to you about the bonus assignment. I said it's at least 1,000 meaningful words or 2,000 words in Chinese, also meaningful words. Um, but when you count words, be, and if you use Google Docs and you're counting the number of words, be careful of the Google Docs error. What is the error? What's wrong with this picture? This on Twitter's moment. Yes, so here it has highlighted two words, but the computer says it's five words. In fact, the computer is counting letters. There are some other problems. For example, what is this? Why is there like one S at the beginning of the line? And what is this? It looks like the second half of expectations, but where's the first half? In fact, the first half of these words are on the previous line, but the computer has cut them in half. The reason for this error is that the computer looks at each letter as one word. Um, in Chinese, so it doesn't care about the whole word. It can cut a word anywhere. 
This is a problem because if you don't notice and you think you have written 1000 words, maybe in fact you have only written 200. So how do you avoid this problem? If you're uh, if you're using Google Docs, do not save as Word. Instead, copy and paste. Or you can just use Microsoft Word to write your uh, bonus assignment. Um, if you like writing on your phone or a tablet, our school has uh, Microsoft Office 365. You can apply for an account and it will have a mobile version. Word. And that can avoid this problem. OK. Great. So uh, let's begin this week's lesson. The syllabus says. Uh, tenses and progressive aspect. So let's talk about this. We mentioned last time that English only has three tenses. Why am I using caps lock? The past is things that happened before. The future is things that will happen or you expect will happen. But in English, the present is used for something completely different. We still use the present tense. 因为写下来的东西本来就属于时间之外，你随时要读都可以，所以也不给它一个时态，也是用现在式。即便只发生一次也是。So this leads us to the third situation when you're talking about a plan. For example, if uh, my friend asks me, oh, you're going to the US tomorrow. How, uh, when do you plan to leave? I might tell my friend, oh, I wake up at six, then I go to the airport. It's one thing and it's not written down, but it's a plan. When we think of plans, it's always something that we try to decide before it happens. So it's the same logic as writing it down. So you can also use the present tense for something that you plan to do. Now, some grammar textbooks will tell you that this is the future, using the present tense to talk about the future. And that's true, but it's more confusing. It's easier and simpler to think of this as a plan. Of course, if you end up not following the plan, then you have to use the past tense, right? Only for plans that have not yet happened can you use the present tense. Questions so far? Sorry, the, the classmate behind you first. She rose her hand first. Ah, so you want me to complete this sentence. OK, the plan was uh, here. We would use an infinitive. Yeah, uh, we'll talk about this in the verbs section uh, later. But the key idea here is the present tense. And you had a question?
Yes. Yes. So this is why I put these examples together. Because uh, you're, you, the way that you use to look at this is the same thing, right? It always happens. Anytime you flip to page five, Harry Potter will wake up at six. It always happens. So the logic is the same. Thank you. Other questions? OK, so now uh, let's talk about special uses of the past and future tense. Um, in English, many stories are written in the past tense, and this is because a story is supposed to be out about something that happened. But some writers will decide that uh, they want to achieve some kind of effect, and so they will use the present tense or even the future tense. So to go back to the example, usually you would see. The past tense to tell a story. This is the most common way of uh, writing a story in English. But sometimes if a writer wants to make you feel what happens as it is happening, they might use the present tense. Uh, it's a part of a story, so. I need to give a story. Um, so some writers believe that using the present tense to tell the whole story uh, makes it more immediate, more direct. If there's a less separation between the story and the reader. Very and a small number of writers will write the whole story in the future tense. This is not very common, but it does happen. Now, what kind of effect do you think this writer is trying to create when you write a whole story in the future tense? Sorry, why did I do that? Right, the whole story is in the future tense. The future is unknowable. We do not know for sure what will happen. So even something that is likely to happen may not actually happen. So writing a whole story in the future tense creates a feeling of uncertainty. You're not sure that something will change or not. And sometimes you will see this. Now, when we tell a story, things are happening as we read. But things also have happened uh, before the moment of reading. How do I describe this? OK. So if this story is written in Let's, let's start with the simple one, written in the present tense. But then we're always reading something like, Harry wakes at six, he goes to get a donut. It's happening as we read. But when we read that Harry gets a donut, how, if we then want to describe Harry waking up at six, that moment has already passed. So to describe that past moment, the author might then use the past tense. Think about this. First thing happens, Harry wakes. Second thing happens, he gets a donut. 
But as he gets a donut, he realizes that he woke up too early and so couldn't get a donut. Right, so this sentence is jumping into the past to it's like a memory for Harry or it's a reminder for the reader. So the same thing. If he's thinking about the future, then it will use a future tense sentence. At this point, he has only done two things. He has woken up and he has gone to try to buy a donut. Sorry, this should be is, is closed. He, when he's thinking about the past, the story will use the past tense. When he's thinking about the future, the story will use the future tense. That's pretty simple. But what happens if the story is told in the past tense? How do you, so like when the story is told in the past tense, then what is happening will be in the past. But how do you describe what happened before? How do you describe what happens after? You would still use the uh, past and the future, but you would add a layer of, of past on top of it. 一样是用过去跟未来, so let me show you what that means. So uh, had woken, we will talk more about this next week, but this is the past perfect. Another name for the past perfect is the pluperfect. Pluperfect just means more than perfect, which means more than past. It's the past of the past. So when you need to say something that happened in the past, in a story that is already in the past, you add another layer of past tense. For the future, uh, the original word is will. Will is a very strange word in English, right? It's the only time we use a new word to talk about a different time. The word will has a long history that I really don't want to talk about now, but the idea is that if you need to change the time, you would change the word will. Would is the past tense of will. So this is from the past, Harry is thinking about the future. So it's the future with a layer of past added on top. Would just will the quarter C, just as easy. Okay, so what happens with the future tense? When you need to change these two sentences into the future. Well, if for the past you move from the past to the more past, then from the future you would move to the present. Well, what about the future future? English doesn't have another uh, tense for this, so we still keep the future. And you would you, you would rely on the word tomorrow to tell the reader that this is happening in the future future. Questions? Do you need some time to digest? Yes. Uh, I think 
Okay, yes, so you're right. When you talk about this kind of future plan, there's more than one way. In fact, there are three ways. One is the simple future, and you ignore the idea that it's a plan. The second is using the present tense as a plan. The third one is what I'm going to talk about next, which is using some kind of progressive or be going to. Yeah, so you're right. So I'm going to talk about that next. Do we, for now, do we have other questions? OK, so this is the simple aspect, right? past, present, future. Right? We've talked about all three kinds. Now let's move into the progressive aspect, First of all, you have to remember how to write this. And this is a fun rule that covers all aspects. I love grammar. So this is the past progressive, present progressive, future progressive. Every time we change the aspect, the first word will tell you the tense, the time. The second word ending will tell you the aspect, what kind of sentence. So, uh, for example, just to give a quick example. Next week, we will talk about these two. But in the uh, perfect tense, one sense, the first word will tell you it's in the present. Right? The past is had, the future is will have. The first word tells you the present. The second word tells you that this is the perfect tense. For a uh, perfect progressive, same thing. The first word tells you it's the present. The second word tells you it is a perfect. And the next word tells you it is a progressive. So it's present, perfect, progressive. The concept is in the name. 用中文简单讲，就是从前面数到后面，每一个字扛一个概念。第一个字扛时间，然后第二个字扛状态。如果你状态有两个，完成进行是两个状态，你第二个字扛完成，第三个字扛进行。One idea per word from front to back. So if you forget how to use these, or you read it and you don't know what's going on, think about this rule. First word is the time, second word is the uh, kind of sentence. Okay, so the progressive tense. We use this to talk about things that are happening or you want to emphasize that it is ongoing. So when you say, uh, I woke, um, where is it? Anyway, if you say, I woke, Simple past. That means it happened. That's it. No fancy ideas. But if you say I was waking, that means that whatever happens next interrupted your waking. You were in the middle of trying to wake up. So maybe this sentence says, um, So you were not yet fully awake. You were still trying to wake up. You were waking when 
uh, your dog jumped on your bed. So the idea is the dog interrupted your process of waking up. Uh, maybe you were surprised, maybe you were unprepared. You want to say that you were in the middle of doing something. This is true for all three, past, present, and future progressives. Maybe if I change a word, it would be easier to understand. So how about I was driving when my dog jumped on me. More scary. Um, so you can tell that you're emphasizing you were in the middle of doing something. This is a very important idea, right? If you simply say I drove and my dog jumped on me, it doesn't, it isn't as clear. You don't convey the idea that the dog is interrupting you or that these two ideas together create a dangerous situation. So sometimes you have to emphasize you are in the middle of doing something. Uh, so when do you use the past, the present, or the future? It depends on the story that you're telling. When you talk about a progressive tense, you are always telling a story. Even in daily life, you're telling your friend, oh, I was driving and suddenly my dog jumped on me. It's always a story. So when do you use the past or the present or the future? It depends on your story. If your whole story is past tense, then you would use past progressive. If your whole story is present tense, use present progressive. Future tense, use future progressive. And the same rule applies for talking about things in your story from the past and from the present. If uh, the thing that was interrupted happened in the past of your story, follow the same rule. Okay, so like if your story is in present tense and you're talking about something in the past, you would say uh, he was driving or he will be driving. If your whole story was in the past, you would say he had been driving or he would be driving. Same rule. And in the future, he is driving and he will be driving. Now, there, uh, there's only one exception. This thing. We know that be going to can be used for the future. How exactly do we do this? And what is the difference between this and simply saying will? Let's take a short break. If you only learned your group number today, please come and find me.
be going to is usually used to express the future, right? I am going to the airport. This means that this probably will happen in the future. But you'll notice that in terms of grammar, it uses the present progressive. So this is why some textbooks will say, well, not some textbook. This is why the present progressive can also be used to express the future. Remember, we don't know the future. Remember, we don't know the future. There are only different levels of probability. And so this is the difference between be going to and will. I can't type with one hand. Be going to has a higher probability. Will is simply a plan. Uh, why? OK, I guess I will have to talk about the word will. So in older English, like Middle English, the word will was a verb. And it means. Um, it, it's a kind of intention or order. So this verb looks like this. Sorry. Uh, so the word will today, it also means like willpower, right? Intention, something that that you have that you want to use to do something. So in the past, this word will was a verb and it's saying I want this to happen. I want to do this. So today uh, as future tense, it's more like a plan. It's connected with intention. 那个用意, so for this verb in the past, for the second person and third person, it turned into the word shall. And this is connected with the word should in terms of some kind of rule or expectation that you have you should follow. Right? So if I say you should not talk in class. For example, this use of the word should is connected with this use of the verb shall. It's an order to somebody else, right? So if you order yourself, you would say I will. If you order someone else, you would say you shall or someone shall or shall not. So for example, you guys have seen Lord of the Rings, right? At the end of the first movie, they're running from a monster underground. Uh, they have to cross a very narrow bridge. Everyone crosses and then Gandalf stops in the middle, right? He turns around. He grabs his staff to face the monster. What does he yell? You shall not pass. And then he takes his staff, sticks it into the bridge. The bridge collapses and the monster and Gandalf fall to the bottom. He uses the word shall because it's an order. He is ordering the monster not to pass the bridge. Now, today we, don't, we no longer use the word shall or the word will like this. This is simply in the history of the language. In fact, in order to prevent confusion, in order to use a, a future tense that does not have these ideas, it was later decided that a neutral 中立的, 中性的 future tense would reverse these two, would flip it. So today we say you will and he or she will. But in the early 20th century, they said 
I shall. So by flipping it, it uh, prevents confusion about whether you're talking about an order or simply something that will happen. Um, all of this is to explain why I will is less likely than I am going to. I am going to is simply describing something that's happening. I will carries the history of intention and giving orders. And a description, a simple objective description is more likely to happen than something that you want to happen in terms of the language. OK, raise your hand if you understood what I was talking about. OK, uh, Will是一个动词，它表达意念。我想要干嘛，我打算干嘛。但是针对别人的话，你想要人家干嘛，就会用shall。这个可以可以从should作为道德训诫的应该，还保有这样的一层含义。那后来为了能够生出一个中性的未
Your handout is all questions, and the questions are all corrections. Those are guy So on the first page, if you don't have a handout, I will give you one next week. For this week, you can share with your friends or you can download it from Moodle. So in this set of questions, every sentence is wrong. Please correct it to the right version. So for example, I know like cold weather changes to I don't or do not like cold weather. OK, so you can work with your group. There are 16 questions. I will give you 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, we will check the answers. For question six, it says supply name, which means you can use any name.
OK, let's compare answers. Question one, I know living at home right now. Hang on, don't we jump? OK, question one, I know living at home right now. What is one possible answer? I don't live at home right now. Do we have other answers? Yes. I am not living at home right now. Good. Do we have other answers? OK, there are other possible answers, but they're not very common. For example, you could say. I if you're from the 16th century, you can say I live not at home right now. But that's not very common. So what is the difference between the first answer and the second answer? I don't live and I am not living. Grammar decides your context. What is the difference? If you say I don't live, that means this is the situation. Simple. But if you say I am not living, this means it is happening right now. So maybe it did not happen in the past. Maybe it will not happen in the future. So the idea is I am temporarily living at home. OK, good question two. I be living in this city. What is one answer? I live in this city. What's another answer? Yes. I have been living in this city. I think uh, if we want to use the present progressive, I think we need more information. Uh, because the present progressive is always related to another sentence. So if this is only one sentence. Um, I want more information before I use this. OK, good. Uh, it's possible, but maybe we need more information. Do we have other answers for number two? I am living in this city, so the idea is the same as in question one. Good. Do we have another answer? No, OK. Question three. Student at this school. What is one answer to correct this sentence? It, it should be a complete sentence. The students at this school, is this a complete sentence? Oh, the student is at this school. Uh, Yes, this would work. Uh, in this case, it is one student. The, the, the problem says one student, so you're keeping the one student, and because it is the student at this school, there's only one. You add the word the to tell the reader there's only one. Do we have other answers? Students. Are. OK, so the same as the first one, but instead you think the mistake is should be plural. Good. Do we have another uh, another answer? Any you could actually add any verb. Um, I think another answer could be maybe they want to say. The verb study. Maybe student study. This could be a mistake. Next one, number four. I am not. I am study English. What is one possible answer? I am studying. Good. What is another possible answer? Yes. I study English. 
So what is the again? What is the difference between these two sten uh, sentences? Yes. Yes. No. 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 You. Mm -hmm. OK, so the first part is correct. When you say I am studying, that tells the other person this is simply what I am doing now. It's not going to be forever. Now you said the second one is a kind of truth. Yes, but specifically what kind of truth? And I study English is the same as saying I major in English. No matter how old you are, as long as you graduate from college in an English department, you can always say I major in English. That is now part of your identity. So it, it is a truth, a kind of truth. It is always true. Uh, but I study English means you have not yet graduated. But the idea is very similar. It is part of your identity. Do we have other answers? OK, next one, number five. I am not knowing my teacher's name. What is one possible answer? I don't or do not know. Good. Or not good, you should know. What is another possible answer? Yeah, this is the most correct one. I don't know. It has to be present tense because no is not an action. No is a status. That's a good So even though it is a verb, the verb tells it is a it the verb describes a situation. It does not do anything. Right? So I know, I don't know. Or if you're telling a story in the past, I didn't know. If your story is in the future, I will not know. But it's always uh, the idea is it's not connected with beginning and ending an action. It's always outside of time. So again, if you live in the 16th century, you can say I know not. This will be useful for you because next year you have to take English literature. Number six, somebody teach our English class. This should be one person. What is one possible answer? OK, so some kind of person, Harry, for example, teaches. Good, because in English we have a rule for the first person singular present tense. The verb has to end in S. This is the only kind the, uh, one of this kind of rule. This comes from Latin because in Latin, Every verb has a different ending depending on the grammar. Latin is kind of crazy to learn. Uh, but that means in Latin you can rearrange the words and the meaning is still the same. In English, we mostly have the same ending, so the word order has to be correct. OK, do we have other answers for number six? The correct answer is CJ. That's my name. Number seven, uh, he or she expect us to be in class on time. What is one possible answer? Good, expects. That is the best answer for this question. Number eight, we always are coming to class on time. What is one possible answer? Yes. We always come to class because this is always. It always happens. It's outside of time. You can use the present tense. What is another possible answer? One other possible answer is that this sentence is correct in a specific situation. If. Very often. In on the way to class, 
something happens to you. You trip and fall, get hurt. You meet a friend who won't let you go without chatting for 10 minutes. If this happens very frequently, then you can say you are always coming to class on time, but something always uh, stops you from arriving. So grammar decides your context. If you give more information, maybe it could be correct. Number nine, Tom, does he going to school? What is one possible answer? Does Tom go to school? What is another possible answer? Is Tom going to school? OK, what is the difference between these two? The first one is always true. Does Tom go to school? Which is really asking, is Tom a student or teacher? Is Tom somebody who has to go to school every day? Good, what about the second one? Is Tom going to school? Could be asking, is he on his way to school now? Is he in the middle of going to school? But it could also be the future. Is Tom going to school tomorrow? Or is he going to skip class again? OK, number 10, Tom, no, go to school. What is one possible answer? Doesn't go to school. Remember, Tom is one person. He's a third person. He, OK, so first person, D and then is I. Second person, dear Renzen, it's you. Third person is anybody else, D. Renzen. So Tom is third person, he's one person. This looks like present tense, maybe. So in that case, you would say does or doesn't go. What's another possible answer? Tom cannot make it to school, so Tom you would be saying Tom didn't go to school, right? He didn't get there. Could be. We're slowly being more and more different from the question. This, the original sentence needs more information, so there are many possibilities. But again, if you're from the 16th century, you can say Tom goes not to school. Number 11. My sister don't have a job. What should this be? My sister doesn't have a job. Good. Or not good. She should have a job. Or maybe the mistake is the plural, right? My sisters don't. Depending on your situation. Number 12, what is one possible answer? Does Sarah has a job? Does Sarah have a job? Yes. I said that the verb for third person singular present tense should end in S. This is the main, sorry. This is the main verb, does. Does indeed ends in S. So this is the verb that carries the tense. This is the verb that carries the aspect. The aspect is simple. 简单现在是一个字扛一个概念，这个呃，对不起，现在简单是，现在是在这里，简单是在这里，所以第一个动词扛现在，第二个动词扛简单，所以呃，只需要do加s，have就不用加s。OK。OK, uh, number 13, does you have a job? This should be do you because you is second person, not first person. Has a dear and dear and so you don't add S. 14, what is this? Is Canada, does it be north of the United States? So what should this be? Is Canada...
Is Canada north of the United States? I heard somebody say in the north of, but in the north of means it's inside in the northern part. If you want to say uh, it's outside, you can say to, sorry, to the north of. This is outside. Uh, I think this is the only common answer. 15. I never go to my, I, sorry, I never to go to my office on Saturday. I never go to, yes. Uh, and you can say uh, my office or the office. Either one is fine. 16. Ahmed, Toshi, G, Ingrid, and Pedro eats lunch together every day. This should be eat because this is more than one person. So this should be eat lunch together. Blah, blah, blah. Eat. Blah, blah, blah. Now, if they are a group, like, um, for example, if you give the five names of the people in BTS or Blackpink, they are a group, and you talk about them as one group. You would say, eats. It's more than one person, but it's one group. Unless you're British, the British uh, still look at this group as five people. But in American English, one group is singular, Danshu. OK, do you have questions about this set of questions? OK. Um, let's see. That's a lot of questions. Hang on. We also did this. We also did this. Uh, progressive, we also did this. I am learning. I am right here. Yeah. Right, right, right. I am studying here. So I'm going to check your college. Is a great mess. Wow. That's a lot of questions. Participial adjectives. Am confused, am confusing. We talked about this, so you can also do this. Passive. OK, wait, hang on. Where is the perfect and perfect progressive? Oh, that is perfect. OK, OK, yeah. So uh, this is also perfect perspective. I see, I see, I see, I see. Have left. I was, I viewed things when I was there. We went to a restaurant. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 OK. Um, right, so. Ah, OK, well, can't do it. I know what I what I was doing. OK, so when you go home, you can. Do the questions up to the first half of page five. The second half of page five is for next week. So next week, the first thing we will do is I will ask you if you have questions about the first five pages. If there are some questions you're not sure of the answer, uh, we will talk about it in class. And then I will talk about next week's progress. So, Do you have questions about anything? 先到表在哪? 嗯, 